is Kristen Jacobson. Hey everyone, I'm Kristen, the Anxiety Therapist, and today I wanna to talk about a topic that is very near and dear to my heart, and that is perfectionism. And I've been a perfectionist for pretty much as far back as I can remember, and at this point in my life, I would consider myself a recovering perfectionist, but there are still times that I kind of get stuck in these ways of thinking. And I think this is a topic that really touches many of us, particularly those of us who lean toward high achievement and really meticulous attention to detail. So as a therapist and somebody who really digs deep into the science behind our behaviors, I've seen firsthand how perfectionism can serve as both a superpower and kryptonite. And I think it's very, it's almost like joked about in our society, oh, I'm such a perfectionist, or it's sort of revered in a way. And in a lot of ways, it can be very beneficial and useful but it can also be extremely self-sabotaging. And so I think that's where things get a little messy and that's when a lot of my clients come to me for help is they've experienced such success in their lives by being perfectionists, but now it's really starting to take a toll on them. So what exactly is perfectionism? It basically involves setting exceptionally high standards that are often unattainable and go beyond healthy ambition. So it's characterized by this sort of persistent need for flawlessness, a lot of self-evaluation, and a lot of concern regarding others' evaluations. So this isn't merely about striving to improve, but it's, it's a deeper, sometimes obsessive compulsion to achieve perfection in most aspects of life. And this can manifest in various domains from academic performance to personal appearance to professional performance, where the individual feels this constant pressure to perform without errors. So let's look at some of the science behind perfectionism. The roots of perfectionism can be traced back to both genetic and environmental factors. So the genetic predisposition is I'm not sure if you guys have ever heard of the big five personality tests, but one of those personality tests that's evaluated on the big five is neuroticism. And this is a trait that can be hereditary and is associated with perfectionism. So this trait might predispose individuals to the anxiety and compulsive behaviors that are often seen in perfectionism. We then have environmental influences. So this is the whole nature versus nurture debate, right? And uh, genes versus environment. So perfectionism is significantly shaped by environmental factors, such as parenting styles and societal expectations. So let's say you're a child who grows up with a very critical or demanding parent. You might adopt these perfectionistic tendencies as a way to seek approval or avoid criticism. And so it's sort of, um, it was originally developed as sort of this protective mechanism and a way to get what you need, but now into adulthood, it has sort of started to turn on you and has started becoming self-sabotaging in a way. When this perfectionism turns toxic and it becomes problematic or maladaptive, this is when it leads to distress or dysfunction. So maladaptive perfectionists are rarely satisfied with their achievements and they can really experience a significant amount of anxiety about meeting their own or others' expectations. And so this form of perfectionism is associated with a range of mental health issues. And again, this is when I see most clients coming to me. So they're gonna experience anxiety and or depression. The constant pressure to perform can lead to intense anxiety and feelings of depression when those unrealistic goals are not met. It can also cause chronic stress and health problems. So the relentless stress of striving for perfection can have physical health consequences like cardiovascular disease. And then finally, it can lead to a lot of procrastination and avoidance. So ironically, the fear of not being perfect can lead some perfectionists to procrastinate or avoid tasks altogether, right? It's It becomes almost paralyzing in that way. And that's something that I see in a lot of my clients that procrastination and or avoidance. 
So some examples of how this might show up in real life in the workplace. So a person might spend excessive time on tasks, checking and rechecking their work, and this can ultimately lead to inefficiency and burnout. In personal life, in social settings, a a perfectionist might obsess over details like event planning, which can really detract from them enjoying the moment and lead to some social anxiety. And then in academics, so students might experience extreme stress and anxiety, constantly rewriting papers or studying excessively, which can then actually hinder rather than help their academic performance. So how do we mitigate unhealthy perfectionism? Addressing this involves both cognitive and behavioral changes. So cognitive meaning um, relating to our thinking processes and then behavior meaning related to the actions that we take, right? So number one is setting realistic goals. This helps counter the unattainable standards that perfectionists set by aligning expectations with what is practically achievable. Number two is embracing a growth mindset. So if you're familiar with Carol Dweck's work, she talks about a fixed mindset versus a growth mindset. So adopting the belief that abilities can be developed through dedication and hard work can help shift focus from this more fixed outcome, this perfect outcome, to continual improvement the growth mindset. Number three, practicing self-compassion. This involves being kind to yourself when expectations are not met and recognizing that perfection is not possible or necessary. And then finally, seeking professional guidance. So as I mentioned, a lot of my clients struggle with perfectionism and anxiety and therapists can really help individuals understand the root causes of their perfectionism and develop healthier coping strategies. And a lot of the clients that I see who experience this they'll often have a history of complex trauma, but not even realize it. And so that's something that we can sort of uncover together and work through how this shows up in their lives nowadays. So understanding these aspects of perfectionism not only clarifies its complexities, but it really highlights the importance of managing it effectively so that you can maintain your mental health and well-being. And so while perfectionism can drive us to achieve great things, it is crucial to recognize when it becomes a barrier to happiness and mental health. And by understanding the roots and manifestations of perfectionism and using these strategies I mentioned to manage the the less helpful aspects, the kryptonite, we can really strive for excellence in a healthier, more fulfilling and balanced way. So I hope this video was helpful. I would love to hear about your own struggles with perfectionism and if there are any techniques or tools you would like to add to this list that have been helpful for you to overcome some of those mental or behavioral blocks. And yeah, leave a comment, ask a question, and I look forward to seeing you all next week.